The boy was saying goodbye to his grandfather, but secretly slipped a cell phone into his pocket. After the funeral, he couldn't resist sending a text message to his grandfather, who received a reply the next day. Ray hurriedly picked it up and saw a string of strange characters, three capital C's and two lowercase a's. He hurried downstairs to find his father, saying that grandfather had sent me a message at two o'clock in the middle of the night. Ray thought back to the day of the funeral, when a strange man had paid his respects to his grandfather after him. Could it be that he had taken the phone? To verify his suspicions, he immediately rode his bike to the cemetery and dialed his grandfather's number, then got down on the ground and listened carefully. The familiar ringing sound came from underground, which meant that the phone was still in the coffin. What the hell is going on? Ray did not dare to continue to think, can only reassure themselves that maybe it really is a text message serial number it. But an even bigger scare was waiting for him. A few days later, the school organized a dance, but Ray was pulled into a corner by the school bully to demand protection money. He resisted and annoyed the other party. The school bully crossed his arms on the ground and beat him up. Everyone remembers this pose. The father asks who did it, but Ray won't say. And the father and son are upset about it. A depressed Ray remembers the good old days when the grandfather and grandson used to talk to each other, and sends a big voice to his grandfather's cell phone. It turns out that he was reluctant to testify against the school bully for fear of more violent retaliation unless he could be made to disappear completely. I thought it was just a casual remark, but who knows? The next morning, he received the news that the school bully was dead. Grandfather was just buried during the day, and in the middle of the night, he even sent a text message to his grandson. Ray was scared, but grandfather and grandson love, but still told grandfather about being bullied at school. I did not expect to wake up. The school bully surprisingly bizarre death. Although the cause of death is downstairs slipped and fell and broke his neck, but the bizarre posture, but the exact same as when he was fat beaten by the school bully and he was holding the shoe polish. Is the usual bullying props? This is definitely not a coincidence. Ray has been wondering who did it he went back to his grandfather's old house and tried to open a mysterious room. When the housekeeper suddenly appears, Ray has to give up and follows him to the kitchen for a chat. He overhears that grandpa had fired a gardener and the two had a grudge. Could it be the mysterious man who had appeared at the funeral? He finds the gardener's house, but learns from a neighbor that the man committed suicide years ago. He knows it's ridiculous, but Ray still calls his grandfather and says if the school bully thing is really related to you, knock on the wall three times. Then Ray hangs up and waits quietly for the results. Then Ray hangs up and waits quietly for the results. Suddenly, when Ray was laughing at himself, his grandfather called, and Ray was too scared to get close until the ringing ended. And then he picked up his phone with fear and trepidation. Who knew that his grandfather had sent that strange text message again? This Ray could not stand it anymore. He immediately bought a new phone and changed the number, and erased all the information on the old phone. Originally, he wanted to throw the phone away, but it carried the feelings between himself and his grandfather, so he locked it in a box. I thought that everything just passed. Came to the city to study in college Ray are about to forget about this matter, but unexpectedly this day received an emergency call from dad. Hurry home. And something happened. The boy had vowed not to let his dead grandfather kill for him. But this time, he just couldn't help himself. He took out the dusty metal box, took out the old phone, briefly charged it and dialed the phone. Grandfather has been dead for almost one year. But every time as long as the name of the enemy told the old man, the enemy will not live to see tomorrow. Ray could not confirm that it was grandfather who did it, but still locked up the phone, not dare to try again easily. But this time, he just could not bear it. It turns out that his beloved teacher died in a car accident a few days ago, while the rich kid with the DUI only needed three months of sobriety in a sanatorium. In a fit of rage, he told his grandfather what happened, hoping that the bad guys would be punished. He originally didn't take it seriously, just as a catharsis. But the next day when he saw the news of the accidental death of the perpetrator, he went straight to the sanatorium and got the information after buying the nursing staff. It turns out that the rich kid swallowed half a bar of soap and choked himself to death alive. A suicide note was also left at the scene, and Ray hurriedly pursued the soap brand, as well as the contents of the suicide note. The company's main business is to provide a wide range of products and services to its customers. Ray went to the cemetery and said his final goodbye to his grandfather, telling him that he was old enough to protect himself and that he hoped he could rest in peace. He then went to the lake and threw his cell phone into the water. And here the story ends.
The film is based on Stephen King's novel of the same name. The film never clearly explains the truth of the matter, but perhaps the master's intention was not to tell a suspenseful thriller story, but to explore one of the deepest fears of mankind, loneliness, and how strong the emotions derived from it can be in order to release it. We'll see you in the next movie.